Welcome to this edition of Duffy Doings, our show about issues relating to healthcare and homelessness on Cape Cod and what's going on at Duffy Health Center. My name is Heidi Nelson and I serve as CEO at Duffy. Today we're going to be talking about our spiritual care program at Duffy Health Center. We've talked about our 20th anniversary. We were incorporated in 1997 and from the beginning, Duffy has had a special focus on the medical needs of the people that we serve. But in working with people who are homeless, we learn more about the nature and the causes of homelessness as well. We believe that homelessness is really a combination of both structural as well as personal issues. So structural issues like low income jobs, high cost housing, but then there are also personal elements that uh, can cause a person to come into homelessness, namely untreated substance use disorders and serious mental illnesses. So as time went on, Duffy Health Center became licensed and certified to provide substance abuse treatment as well as mental health counseling services and psychiatry. After that, we developed case management programs which were specifically to help people connect to community-based services and to give them the support that they need um, for their recovery from chronic illness or again from mental health, uh, mental health issues and substance use disorders. In recent years, we've really become interested in and have uh, embraced the philosophy of trauma-informed care which simply means that we design our programs and services with the understanding that everybody who walks through our doors has suffered at least one major traumatic event in their lives and for many of our clients they have suffered many many traumatic events. Happily in our development recently we met Pam Wani and uh, one of our guests today, and she was looking for a place to provide volunteer hours as part of her clinical pastoral education studies, and uh, then our spiritual care program was born. So I'm very happy to welcome my guests here today, Pam Wani, who is our spiritual care provider at Duffy Health Center. Welcome, Pam. Thank you so much. And Louise Patrick, who is no stranger to Duffy Dewey. <laughs> She's been here before. Mm -hmm. Louise is a therapist in our behavioral health department. Welcome, Louise. Thank you, Heidi. Glad to have you here. So, Pam, tell us what spiritual care is and tell us how it's different than thinking about religion or promoting a religious practice mm -hmm. with our clients. Sure, so we're all spiritual beings, right? We're all seeking meaning and purpose in our lives. And that's really the basis for spirituality, meaning and purpose and values. And religion does address those things. Religion addresses that through a set of beliefs or um, doctrines or creeds that structure the faith or um, religious beliefs of a community. Um, there's actually quite a bit of crossover between spirituality and religion. And so both really speak to a sense of awe, particularly with the created world. Both can speak to comfort, you know, can help us to, to receive comfort from our beliefs. And both can really help us feel connected in many ways to other people mm -hmm. or to nature or to the universe. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you, you need to have a sense of your spirituality when, when you're religious, but I, I don't think that you, you need to be religious in order to be spiritual. As a matter of fact, there's a whole demographic called spiritual but not religious people. Right, so, and that's so. increasing in our society. Absolutely. More and more people characterize themselves as spiritual but, but not religious. That's right. that's so right. yep. just to be clear that the, a big part of the program, it's not proselytizing or um, you know, in, encouraging um, patients or clients to adopt a certain faith or move into a certain certain religion no, or anything absolutely like that. not yeah. no yeah what is uh, what's your background how do you get a, a background in spiritual care and how did you find out about Duffy Health Center yeah so weirdly enough my background is in music so oh. <laughs> okay <laughs> I have uh, I'm a music educator and I've been a music educator for quite a long time 
prior to doing that, because that was my bachelor's degree, I worked in social work for children and family that were involved in what was then called um, DSS, now Department of Child and Family Services. So I have my roots in social work, and I was really feeling a calling to go back into that kind of work. So when I went for my degree in the, um, at the seminary, I really found myself focusing on people that were on the fringes, people that were maligned by society. And that's really what brought me to um, wanting to work with people who are experiencing homelessness. And so I, I knew about Duffy through my church, actually. Mm -hmm. We had done some work for Duffy. What is your church? So my church is South Congregational in Centerville. Okay. And then one of our church leaders is Jane DeGroot, who of course has, has been with Duffy for many years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So it was just one of those uh, interesting twists of fate where a lot of different aspects of your interests and your career path kind of all came all together. All came together and, and, and landed me right here where I believe I'm absolutely supposed to be. Very good, yeah. we do too. Yes, yeah. it was yeah. serendipitous. <laughs> yes, right, right. So Louise, um, tell us what it means to be a therapist. Tell us about your work as, as a therapist at Duffy and in particular in working with our clients who have experienced a lot of trauma and have many, many issues to overcome. Mm -hmm. what, what are some of the common themes that you hear in your work? Well, I think, Heidi, that um, as you mentioned, many of our um, patients or clients have a common denominator of trauma. And um, I would say in general, probably most of our patients have had a lot of uh, disadvantages throughout their life, whether it be poverty or homelessness, um, various kinds of abuse, whether physical or sexual abuse, uh, abandonment, neglect, multiple and complex issues. Um, often leaving them to feel as though they're in some sort of spiritual wasteland or have been abandoned by mm -hmm. God or a higher power or mm -hmm. Uh, whatever they believe might be out there um, that they can turn to for some kind of comfort when things get really tough. Um, you know, in, I think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs and it's a, par uh, a pyramid and on the bottom mm -hmm. is safety and security as yeah. the number one and spirituality I think is up near the top of the pyramid. So I think that's reflected in our work where many of our clients are so focused on survival. Mm -hmm. You know, when I do treatment plans for clients, it's based on increasing income, stable mental health, finding housing, finding a job. Spirituality does not always rise to the top of their priority list, even though it probably should be, but they're not recognizing it. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so great to have Pam. So if I hear any language or theme about feeling a little bit spiritually empty, you know, I try to <laughs> right, <laughs> grab right, people at right. that point and say, I've got someone for you to see because I'm sort of caught up and working on all these other issues. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's a common sort of uh, profile that when people think about people who are experiencing homelessness they kind of have a vision in their head of somebody who's got really significant substance use disorders or um, untreated serious mental illness but I think what we see and certainly we we have clients like that um, but I think we also see people for whatever reason because of their life circumstances often people who suffer from a chronic medical condition mm -hmm. will have depression because of their um, because of their their circumstance or their condition their health, so we do yeah. have a lot of people with, with depression that you help as well right? oh yes oh yes and I think that's also um, another very common treatment goal is to improve physical health because mm -hmm. um, because of the circumstances of many of our clients' lives, they haven't um, had the wherewithal to take good care of themselves, so they end up with, with chronic illnesses. And um, I, I got a thank you letter from a client last week uh, who was saying thank you for uh, the group membership that we have at the YMCA, uh -huh. yep. uh, which was very exciting because yeah. we kind of worked on that and thought, well, the clients have so many challenges uh -huh. getting to the Y and 
you know, are they really going to want to do it? But I thought, oh, that's, I'm so grateful that we're doing that because to have the ability to work on their physical health mm -hmm. as well as it's everything really else a that's going on with them. Yeah. So Pam, um, what is your process when you're working um, with somebody about their spirit? <laughs> right? Where do you start? <laughs> so I, and this is almost hands down, every person that I meet, I ask, what brings you to spiritual care? And then I just sit back and listen. And, and their life story just spills out. And, and so I offer them really this, this presence, this active listening, compassionate listening. And then as our relationship grows, their stories get deeper and deeper and deeper. And so I'm able to echo back a little bit of what they're saying and have them hear it in different words and sort of see, is that really what I mean? Is that really what I feel? And so we can, you know, we can work from there. But there really isn't a process. People are really almost desperate to be listened to, to not have somebody offer them solutions, not have somebody try to fix it, not have somebody try to tell another story that's kind of like what they were talking about, but really <laughs> just listen. Right, yeah. interesting. Excuse me, Pam, and where, excuse me, you can de <coughs> devote a whole session just to that right. is really an advantage. Right, right. and I was just going to comment that um, I had, um, now I'm going to tell a story about just what you said. <laughs> <laughs> People shouldn't do that. But um, we had a luncheon, a holiday luncheon with our patient advisory board, mm -hmm. and um, it was four of our clients who kind of help us kind of keep our finger on the pulse of what's going on with the patients. And out of the four <coughs> patients, uh, two of them had actually been to see you. Uh -huh. And both of them commented about, well, what she really does is she just listens to me, and that was really great. And uh, one of the others who hadn't been to see you yet said, I think I'm going to go see Pam. So yeah. they had had, uh, they had talked that other person in, into going and seeing you. But what often happens is that um, as much as <coughs> our, our staff are um, well known and get high marks on satisfaction uh -huh. surveys for being good listeners, um, when you're a provider <coughs> providing a therapeutic service to somebody, mm -hmm. it has to be part of a plan of care and you're working on specific objectives in the medical department. It might be on making sure you're taking your diabetes medication every day like you're supposed to. You know, with therapy, you can listen, but at some point you have to kind of start How steering people <laughs> yep, yep, <laughs> into yep. a certain direction. So it is a precious thing, mm -hmm. right, to have time with somebody who's right. just there to listen. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Can you yep. share a story of uh, somebody I sure that can. you had referred to Pam? <coughs> and again, I apologize. Oh, my word. That's what happens when you have asthma. Oh. Um, I did, I've referred <coughs> as many people as possible to Pam. And um, one of them is someone who kind of came to a place in his treatment where he was just sort of stuck, spinning his wheels and um, feeling adrift, I would say. And I said to him, you know, I think at this point you might it really benefit from meeting our spiritual um, counselor, mm -hmm. um, Pam Wani, and um, she can help you sort through some things and um, get a sense of what direction you'd like to move into next. And I'm always confident when I refer someone to Pam because I tell them she's really compassionate, she's a great listener, it's not about religion, Thank because you. so many of our clients do have negative experiences with formal religion. Right. Right. And um, she's very warm and comforting and, and all those things. I've never had a bad review. So <laughs> the, the more people I can get in, the better. But, um, but this person said she is right on the ball. And in fact, Pam can get, is another set of eyes that can get a different view of a client than mm -hmm. I can or a case manager can or a medical provider can and say to me, well, what do you think about this for this person? So it's really, it's really beneficial to the, to the staff right. to have Pam available. Right. Well, and uh, that leads us right into the next uh, area of discussion, which is that you're also 
available to the staff right. um, right. at Duffy Health Center to process grief if mm -hmm. they've lost a patient mm -hmm. or um, if they've just had a bad day. I know she, Pam will send around an email saying, have you had a bad day? Just stop by. <laughs> right. So what, what is that like without revealing any confidences? Right. No, no. I mean, people, people just need ways to unpack what they go through throughout their day. Mm -hmm. And so I spend some time just sort of roaming around, checking in with people, especially if I've heard that there have been some trying moments during <laughs> their day. Mm -hmm. um, I also offer meditation for the staff during the week. And um, that's a really, it's a wonderful opportunity to just take a vacation, really, for 30 minutes. And it's kind of a reset button for staff. And I do meditation with clients as well. Mm -hmm. But um, I think for the staff, they really appreciate that opportunity to not be responsible to anyone or anything but themselves for a half an hour each week. And, and you know, so... You know, Pam, um, this same gentleman I was just talking about said to me, he was talking about your meditation yeah, and, yeah. and group and saying, um, her voice is oh. so soothing and he just drifted off and another guy next to him was flat out snoring. <laughs> you know, he was so relaxed. That's what happens to me. And, I always fall asleep and, when I'm supposed to be It happens in yoga class yeah. too, yeah. you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, so mm. that's, and I think, Heidi, um, something Pam didn't mention is that therapist, um, well, all of us, I think all providers um, are, it's called secondary traumatization. Oh. And essentially what it is, is when, as Pam talked about, sitting with someone and being a presence and sort of absorbing mm -hmm. a lot of their pain, um, all of us as providers feel like now we're carrying that around. Right, we're <laughs> we're carrying around yeah. the feelings about that. Okay. And so when Pam talks about unpacking your day and mm -hmm. just having an opportunity to shed some of that, mm -hmm. um, some of that really painful material or feelings is, is a real well, benefit. It, it must be really hard to listen to those difficult, difficult stories sort of it's, hour it's after hour It's painful to hear right. about what really tough lives people right, have had. Right, right, right. And yeah. how do you approach that with the staff? Um, again, much like with the clients, I just let them lead, you know. Sometimes they just need to say something out loud. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of disenfranchised grief when you do this kind of work. What where does that mean, disenfranchised it's, grief? It's, That's it's, a, it's like a secondary, like you, okay. you don't... It's as, you don't have as much right to grieve as someone else. Oh. So a doctor is supposed to be there working with their patients. And so, you know, if something happens to a patient, the doctor just moves on and does the next mm. thing. And rather than taking time to really feel the pain of a, a bad diagnosis or you know, or worse. So they have to separate themselves right. a little bit from what's right. going on, mm. which they, dehumanizes it them. It does, bit, and it, yeah. they still have the right to grieve. And I think that it's disenfranchised feeling is not feeling like you have the right to grieve because right. you've got well, a job to do. That's right, yeah. that's right. That's yeah. a new term yeah. I learned yeah. today. <laughs> so one of the things um, <clears throat> that uh, I know from being around pastors mm -hmm. <laughs> is yes. that part of um, the clinical part of mm -hmm. becoming a pastor yep. is really uh, being with people and what you hear so often is the idea of just being present mm -hmm. for someone yes. and that sounds like it's a big part of what you do. So what do you draw on from your education or from your experience when you're working with mm -hmm. our patients and our staff? Yeah, I had uh, amazing professors in seminary at Andover Newton, and one of my mentors there, Margaret Benefield, talked about the soul that you that you have as a leader, and how it is that you as a leader can bring your spirituality and your soul to your work. Whether your work is in ministry or is in the secular world, you can still, if you put people first, if you put people's <coughs> needs first before anything else, the rest of it will fall into place. So I draw from that, you know, taking people seriously is very important. And another professor who really was was passionate about social justice mm -hmm. and so I really I take the learnings from her and then in my final semester of school I had a, a class that was I think it was called learning to look and it was all about the ministry of presence being actively present in each and every moment and I draw from all of that to really be able to attend to whatever clients or staff bring to me and 
you know, think about how I can work with them best. You know, Pam, um, I wonder if you feel this way because I think you must that sitting with someone and being present mm -hmm. um, is that's a spiritual experience Absolutely. in and of itself. Yep. It's yep. almost, it feels to be like something holy in a way mm -hmm. where um, people share with you their deepest feelings and fears and secrets and things like that. Right. And that's, it's in a way, it, it's a real honor it is that they honor. do that. Yes. And um, it makes me feel very humble. But yes. in that sense, it's, and it's, it, you talk about spirituality being connecting. Right. That's the That's human the connection. connection, yeah, totally the spiritual right. connection with, with our clients. Right, right. And, and I, I mean, just aside from, from my studies, <coughs> I think just being another human being, and I listen to stories, and I think, oh, that's my story. That's, that was, I, I lived that. And, you know, sometimes our stories are so yeah. parallel, mm -hmm. and then they might have gone one way when I went another. And so, you know, you can draw from your own experiences and really understand the humanity in the people that, that we are seeing. And, and in, in addition, if they're, at the same time, I feel not only I've been through that, but when they talk about what they're working on, yep. I can say to myself, oh, yeah. I'm working on that too. <laughs> that's right, that's right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Often I say that the people that we serve at Duffy Health Center are people that, you know, just because <coughs> we had connections and resources, we were mm -hmm. able to overcome an adverse situation right. in our lives our clients because they're low income, so unstably true. housed, you know, I think it's true that we all have in our circle of friends and family, we have people with out of control addictions. Mm -hmm. We true. have people with untreated mental illness. Mm -hmm. I um, have an aunt who was a bag lady mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And I draw on that experience sure. a lot mm -hmm. of what that was like for my father to right. try to work with her it's and get system. her in, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. off, off the street. <coughs> yeah. So um, it's just, like you were saying, it can just be a, a matter of circumstance, whether right. or not you go in, in this direction mm -hmm. or in that direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How long have you lived on the Cape? I've been here for 20 years. My husband is from the Cape. So we moved back here, kind of um, moved into nearby where his parents live and raised our children here and it's yeah. very nice yeah very good and yeah. your your father was a town counselor my father and a principal oh father-in-law yep was okay. the principal of barnstable high school okay. for many many years town oh. counselor worked on conservation yep. so deep you have roots. deep roots here deep roots. that's, that's exciting. great that's exciting. Yeah, even if i am a wash ashore right <laughs> And Louise uh, is recently retired, mm -hmm. um, but we uh, were so thrilled to know <laughs> that she was interested in staying on. She retired as the director of the department, right. but she decided to stay on and help us and, and continue as a therapist. And how's that going it's for you, Louise? It's great. <laughs> it's great, Heidi. Just um, sometimes it's it just, with all the pressures of um, the healthcare, the changing healthcare yeah. world, it's almost easier just to work with clients mm -hmm. and not have to be as worried about um, all the changes that are happening mm -hmm. and how we're going to respond to um, this requirement and that requirement. So, and it's it, for the very reasons we were talking before about making those connections with people and the thought that, you know, it was a good day today. I feel like I helped someone. Right. It's just at the end of the day, yeah. that's as good as it gets. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's a great way to wrap up. Thank you. Yeah. It's as good as it gets yeah. at the end of the yeah. day. So uh, thank you for a wonderful, wonderful com uh, conversation. Mm. Uh, Pam Wani, who's a spiritual care provider at Duffy Health Center, and Louise Patrick, therapist at Duffy Health Center. And that's it for today, and join us next time on our next edition of Duffy Doing. See you then.